Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today we are making this flag case and this is actually a really special one. Luke, our videographer, uh, this is actually his grandmother and grandfather-in-law is their flag. Uh, so it has a lot of significance to the channel and other things going on. But this is going to be a very fun one and I'm really looking forward to diving into it. We'll be talking about some of the pieces as we do it. Let's have some fun. This box is going to be made from mahogany. Uh, this is a very nice, pleasing wood to work with. And so we're going to be starting with this, basically treating it like a big drawer. And with every drawer, you need a bottom. So I've got some uh, uh, six inch wide stock that we need to resaw down into making the bottom. Now, one of my favorite ways to do is take a three quarter board and cut it straight down the middle. And that gives you two that are slightly less than three eighths. Um, and that's thicker than it's necessary, but great for a large piece like this and allows you to have some stock to work with. So if you go a little off the line, it's not a problem. And yes, wooden clogs are necessity. Far, far straighter cuts with this. <laughs> now, a large frame saw like this is very, very useful for resawing, um, especially in uh, wider cuts. This six inch and wider is where I pull it out. If it's less than six inch, I'm usually just going to be using my hand saw to do that. Uh, we need to rip down four, I need four pieces of this. So we're going to rip down two boards that are, I think they're 24 inches long total. Um, so in the end, I just ripped down one four foot long board to make um, four panels. So we have one long one we need to cut into four shorter ones. And uh, with that, we now have the panels that are I'm um, going to be glued up okay. and make this work. Sure. Um, we needed to do a little bit of jointing. These ones were actually pretty good. Um, I don't, I didn't get the, the camera out for that, but just imagine me planing the edges down and uh, bringing them into true. Uh, for the glue up on this, I'm using four quarters uh, glue just because I have it in the shop. Um, usually I use tight bond too, but uh, whatever I've got left over, I'd rather use that up. And four quarters is actually really good stuff. It's fast, it's easy, it's really strong. Um, I, I like it. So clamps, I don't need them a lot for force. I'm just using them more to square it up and flatten it to keep it from bending and twisting and popping. So you need to make sure you have them on both sides to hold the whole thing together. So now let's actually start working on the four outside sides of basically this drawer that will turn into a box. We're going to cut the boards to length, making sure that the two ends are the exact same length and the, the, uh, the front and back, or what will be the top and bottom, um, are also the exact same length. And for this, I'm not going to worry about them being perfectly true and, uh, and, and amazing. I don't want to shoot them right now. We're just going to, to cut them the way they are. I'm going to cut one of them and use that to mark the other one. And that way I have a reality. Rather than just using a tape measure to do every one of them, they'll all come out a little bit different. And I had a little bit of blue out on this one, so a little bit of CA glue, put it on there, clamp it down. 30 seconds later, we're good to go. Um, and in the end, this actually didn't matter because I ended up trimming it off and making them a little bit thinner. And then a little bit of accelerator, and it is good to go. Happiness. So now, because we're doing dovetails, we need these to be um, square on the ends and clean them up. And I'm just going to touch them up just a little bit just to make sure that they, uh, that they are actually square and the dovetails will come out nice and clean. We're also going to go through and mark them all. This is very important because it's very easy to then be like, is this on the top one or the bottom one? I can't quite remember. Uh, mark them and then have an arrow pointing to, normally I'd have it pointing to the top of the drawer, but in this case it'll be the front of the box. Now, I decided to make it uh, not quite as deep as it originally was. Um, or I probably could have gone through, or probably should have gone through and ripped them all down beforehand, but then I decided um, to make the decision to make it a little bit uh, thinner after I had cut all these. That meant we have to go back and rip these all off and plane them down and smooth them out. And so it's nice and easy to clamp them all together and make sure that they're all brought to the same um, thickness. Now onto the dovetails. We need to mark out the depth stop. This is one of the few times where I actually pull out my wheel gauge. It's really, really good for going cross grain. And then we can lay out with dividers so we get the exact same on this one. Now on this, I want to make it uh, a little bit different. We're going to have one really small tail right up at the front, and this will actually be on the door. And then we're going to have two larger tails back in. Uh, I like big tails. I like my pins to be about one third the size of my tails. Just kind of a, a visual aesthetic that, I, that I've grown to enjoy. Then for the dovetails, I have a ton of videos on dovetails. I like to freehand them and eyeball uh, the lines on them and, and just make it look a little bit more organic. My lines aren't all exactly the same. I like that little bit off. It shows that they were, they were hand cut. 
We're going to cut down all of our tails and then trim out the, the front and back on these. Get rid of any of those little wisps that stick out in there. And then we have to chop out uh, the space in between those. And I really like gang cutting. And if you line up the boards like this, uh, then the board on the back will actually be a chisel guide. We're going to stay away from the line and we're going to pare back and get rid of most of the waste. No, I do not come in with a coping saw. I actually really enjoy this method. I, I find this to be both more enjoyable and quicker than a coping saw and chisel. Um, but that's just personal preference. A lot of people will come in with a coping saw and remove most of the waste so that they can come in later and uh, chisel back to the line. And once we go in all the way in, um, we can then use the board in back of it to be the chisel guide to get a nice 90 degree edge. And then check them with a square and if they need anything, come in, make slight adjustments. Uh, it's actually really, really easy to come in with a file and just move the lines a little bit to give you that, that wiggle room. Then we can transfer the lines onto the tails, uh, excuse me, onto the pins. And uh, some people really don't like doing this. I actually rather enjoy it, but very, very important Mark off the waste so you know which side of the line to cut on and what you're going to be removing. This is where people really go astray and they start cutting on the wrong side of the line and this is where a lot of problems happen. Take your time on this transition uh, from tails to pins and you'll be amazed at how easy it all comes together if you really take your time here. Then it's going to be basically the exact same thing and uh, chop down and pair out and chop down and pair out until we get rid of where the tails will be nesting into this. And then we can do the initial fit up and check and make sure that it is the way we want it to go. Do not expect it to fit. It will not the first time. It never does. It always needs to be a little bit of fiddling. I like to come in with a fine file and detail things if they just need a little detailing. Sometimes they need a bit of shaving. Bring in the, the, uh, the chisel for that and then pop them down in and ooh la la happiness. I love it when they fit. Now that all the dovetails have been cut, we need to cut a groove on this. Um, uh, this one is actually on the front, and this will be the slot that the glass goes in. Now the glass isn't going to fit into a groove, it is going to end up being a rabbit. Um, but we haven't cut the front off, we're going to kind of make it like a box and, and rabbit off the front. On the top, uh, excuse me, on the back of the box though, we need to have a quarter inch by quarter inch by quarter inch groove, and that will be where the what would be a drawer bottom goes into the back of the box. Now on this one, I'm actually going to create a shelf running across the middle and the flag is going to be uh, in the middle of the box. So there'll be a small shelf underneath it and then a section on either side of the triangle. And so I need to make the, the shelf on this. I need to make a tenon to go into either side of the board and this will actually hold the shelf to have a captured tenon. So we're going to mark all the way around this. Uh, tenon doesn't have to be much. In this case, it's just about uh, a half inch. I think it was 3 eighths inch deep. It's not holding a lot of weight. It's just there for um, keeping the board from moving around. And so because these are so small, it's much easier to come in and chisel down the cheeks and clean them up that way. Just a little bit of detailing. It's amazing how tight you can get this to work. And uh, then flip it around and do the same thing on the other end. We're basically making the exact same tenon to go into them. Now, when going into the side walls, we want to make sure these are at the exact same point on both boards. So I'm going to mark it on one board, and then I'm going to bring the square over and transition it from one to the other. So this is laying out all of the marks on one board. I want to use the tenon, the reality, to mark its width and its length, set it just in place, and very carefully bring in a pencil and mark those sides. And then I can transfer those lines around because I want to mark not where the board is, uh, but where the actual tenon is. And then we can use that to transfer the lines over to the other board. For the removal of this, we're just going to bring in a chisel and chop down on either side, um, following a little bit away from the line. And then we can come in with another chisel and pare out the waste in between until it is down to depth. And this is actually a really fun step. I don't know why I really like making uh, wide cross grain tenons and mortises. Um, it just it feels good and, and works well. And this um, Filipino mahogany is phenomenal to work with. So wiggle it down in, make sure the test works, and uh, there we go. Now we're going to move on to the back. We need to get this the right size. We made it larger than it needs to be. And so we are going to mark out exactly uh, the size it needs to be. Um, Lengthwise, we want it to fill the groove completely. Uh, Width-wise, it depends on the time of year. If you are in a dry time of year, you have to realize that the board is going to expand in the future. If you are in a wet time of year, you've got to realize the board will shrink in the future. 
Um, so you always want to make it uh, so it has a little bit of wiggle room in those grooves. I'm going to come in with a uh, cheaper chisel and clean out a lot of the, the glue screw ups, uh, squeeze outs, and then we can come through and plane this down. We want to smooth it out uh, because once this goes in the box, it's not going to come out. Now this is much thicker than the groove, so we're going to skew a plane and just plane down the outside edges. I'm going to leave the back of this rough. Um, I love leaving the wood rough because it shows that it was handmade by hand tools. No power tool is going to leave the wood looking like that. And then we want to plane it down until it just fits into the groove. Now before we go any farther, we need to clean it up and get ready for finish because once it's in the wood, we're never going to be able to address this in the future. Uh, for the, uh, the finish, I'm actually going to be um, using Rubio Monocoat and I like to put a bit of uh, sanding onto the surface first because it will draw in uh, the finish farther into the wood because the, the dust in the pores uh, from the sanding actually will wick it in a little farther. So I am going to, to sand the surface after planing it. So now for the main glue up, we need to put the top and bottom into one of the sides, then put in the main shelf, and then we can slide in the back of the box or the bottom of the drawer, wiggle it down into place, apply all of our glue, and then put on the other side of it fitting it down in, make sure you make faces, it really helps out lots of things, and then clamp it down in and squeeze out all the glue. Um, if there's any deformation or any twist in the box, this is the time to fix it. Make sure that everything is both square and twist free and get everything clamped in place and uh, there you go. Now that's all together, we don't need these marks anymore and uh, we need to actually start laying out where the triangle will go on this. That shelf we put in earlier will be the bottom of it, but we're going to need to create two pieces to go uh, at an angle uh, across the, the top to create that um, triangular shape. So we're going to cut off some more of this, which is about uh, three inches wide, uh, which is the height of our cross. And we are going to cut 45 degrees on uh, the tips that come together at the top. And so in some cases it is faster to plane it down and in some places it is faster um, to saw it down and then plane the rest. And so on the first one I tried sawing, I just tried planing it. That worked out really well. But then I thought, nah, the rest of them we're going to saw fairly close to the line. This is a little more delicate, delicate takes a little more skill, um, but it is a good bit faster. You're getting close to the line and then you can come in with a plane and really clean it up and get it dead on uh, exactly what you want. So you put the two boards on a flat surface and they should made up precisely. Happiness. Um, but before we put those in there, I decided let's cut off the front face of this um, because we need to um, get the glass into that and I'd rather just get it out of the way. And this is one of the places where a, a Japanese saw uh, generally works a little bit better because you have it coming down through. And I don't care if it cuts into the inside a little bit, I just don't want it uh, removing that rabbit. So I'm probably, uh, so I'm trying to save that rabbit as much as I can. And it's going to be wander a little bit here and there, and that's, that's okay, we're going to come back and plane it off. Uh, we want it to be edging into the back side of that groove. So now that it's off, we can start doing some of the detail cleanup um, to make sure that everything fits in. Yeah, and you, of course you got to do a little dad joke in there. <laughs> Back to those uh, those uh, triangular pieces. Now that we have them approximately the right size, we're going to put them into the corners and then line them up. And originally I was going to have the corner touching at the bottoms and then have two 45s coming together that connect at the top. So it would run into the top. Um, but after looking at it, I realized that my measurements were off and I actually needed to flip it around the other way. So imagine this 45 on either side, that those would come into the top. I decided to flip those around and have those go into the bottom corners of the triangle. So once we cut them close, come back and clean them up with a plane. And it's kind of, it's exactly the same thing as Kumiko, just on a much, much bigger scale. Uh, now to clamp these in place, um, you really can't get a clamp on there without it running all over the place. Uh, so I ended up actually... Um, squeezing out glue into the spots and then I use those dowels we cut off to then pry it down in and those dowels will squeeze in from either side and I can clamp it on. Now for some of the details on this, um, on one side there is the Marines symbol and then on the other side we're going to create a cross out of Paduk. Uh, and this was uh, kind of a, a fun little one just to rip down a stock piece of Paduk about three quarter by three quarter ish. Um, cut it to a visual, visual, a visual length, and then lay out where the middle on the cross members are, 
and then transfer those marks from one to the other. And we're going to do a little half lap here just to put these two together. And I wanted to make them tight enough so that when they popped into place, they, they went down well. If you want to get practice on this, one of the best things you can do is create a little hand puzzle, um, a burr. You make a dozen or more of these to create the puzzle. And it's doing the exact same thing. You just uh, saw in from one side, saw in from the other, then come with a chisel and remove the waste down to the line. Just make sure you don't go past the line. And theoretically, they should tap down into place and be a nice, clean, tight fit. And that's exactly what I want. Now, I wanted to soften the edges rather than having it a rough, hard um, cross. So we came back through with a plane and chisel and chamfered all the edges. And there's something fun about doing hand chamfers and um, cleaning them up with just a chisel to create that edge and just freehanding the whole thing. It is very, very pleasing. Especially when you get a chamfer that comes into a corner and meets on the inside corner. A whole lot of fun. On the other side, there's actually a Marine's Crest. Um, and I ordered that off of Amazon. Uh, it was one that they, they chose out. And I've got a couple scrap pieces of Paduke that we're going to glue on. So I just need to rough up the back of it. And these will actually set it off of the back a little ways so that they kind of pop out. So if there are ever lights get put in there, uh, you'll see that there's uh, some space and there's some shadowing and it just adds a little bit more. So clamp one of those onto the crest and then one of them onto the cross. And uh, then we go back and we sharpen things up. I want to make sure that the low angle plane here is really nice and sharp because we're going to be doing some, um, some weird cutting on this. We're going to use this to run around the box and flatten it out and smooth it out. And when you come to a corner, you turn it 45 degrees and you go across it. And that allows you to have one plane going all the way down. Just make sure you're going with the grain because sometimes you run into a corner and sometimes you run out of a corner. Just pay attention to the board, clean them out, smooth off the faces on both the frame and the box. Before we do any of the, the final work on it, we've got a couple peg holes from the grooves that we cut out. And uh, I like to actually fill them. Some people will um, cut the grooves to stop or to create half blind dovetails to cover them. Um, I actually just like filling them. And I can use a scrap piece of wood, cut it roughly the right shape, squeeze it in, a little bit of super glue, and it's amazing how much they disappear. On the regular holes, you just drive them in and uh, smooth them over, and you're good to go. When you do your finished planing, they just disappear, and uh, I, I like it. It's really easy, and it's actually rather fun to do that. Now onto the smoothing out. Um, once we have those in there, we have to plane the sides down nice and, and, and flush. Um, and so when you're doing that with dovetails, you always plane from the outside into the middle. Um, even if you're running against the grain, it's better to do that. I had a few cracks in this, um, so I decided to do the, the sawdust and, uh, and, and glue trick. It actually worked pretty well. I had a few of these boards that were drying out a bit faster than I wanted them to, but uh, that cleans them up really nicely. Now on the box side, we are going to create a bead running around just inside the box to kind of hide the, the seam for the lid. And I'm going to use my Stanley 50 with a, uh, a quarter inch bead on there and it'll clean it out. Now when we run off the end, we're going through a dovetail and so you put a sacrificial piece on there and it allows you to plane off the end without splintering off. We're going to be putting on a couple hinges that I got from Rockler. Um, I really like these hinges. They're, they're good, heavy-duty, beefy hinges. Um, I either get them from Rockler, Rockler or Brusso Hardware, and uh, they are, uh, they're phenomenal. They feel good, and they, they work well and will hold a lot of weight. We're going to put three hinges along the top. We're going to lay them out and then mark them, make sure that they're the right depth. And then when we get the screw to go in, uh, we're going to mark the center of the screw with an awl, and then come in and pre-drill them. Whenever you're working with brass screws, you must have to, got to pre-drill them. Uh, you're probably going to end up breaking them. Add some wax, run them in there. Uh, some people will even go in with steel screws first to create the threads, and then you can run in with the brass and clean those out. At the bottom, I originally was going to put a catch or a latch, and then I decided, no, let's actually just do it with some magnets. They hold really, really well. So I'm going to put one of them in the hole, uh, and then glue that one in place. And then I can use that to transfer where the second one should be. So I want to make sure that the pull, the polarity is correct and the orientation is correct. So once one of them has been glued in, we can connect the other one on and then I can put it over and mark off exactly where it needs to be. Come in and drill that side. Then you just put in a piece of masking tape on the one side, connect the, the, uh, the magnet onto that 
and then put it over and glue it down on. And the magne the masking tape, or the packing tape, excuse me, will stop the glue from sticking to the secondary magnet. And just like that, it holds the bottom in. For the finish on this, I'm going to be using Rubio Monocoat. This is one of my all-time favorites. It looks like paste wax and boiled linseed oil. Has a really nice, good touch. Feels really good. Easy to put on. Smells great. It's just an all-around amazing finish. The only problem with it is it, it's rather expensive. But it is, it's 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 fool foolproof to put it on. You can't over put it on. You can't. Uh, the, the only thing you, you that's a problem is to under put it on. You'll see some spots that are a little bit light. You can come back in and soak that on. You just want to get as much on there as you can, let it soak into the wood, and then come back and wipe off the excess. So I'm just applying it on there with a pretty wet rag, soaking it into all of the fibers, and I'll set it aside for about 15 minutes or so, and then come back and wipe it off. Uh, especially on the back side here where it was rough, uh, it really soaks up a lot because there are a lot of well, there's a lot of surface area and fibers. After that, come in with a rag and polish it off, and it leaves you with that really nice flat uh, satin feel. It's not a gloss; it just feels really, really good. And of course, then Luke had to play a prank with my clogs. He likes to just put them in opposite order, so I come in and put my foot in the wrong one. <laughs> Now you need to put on the cross and the Marines logo. So we're going to pre-drill in where those are at, drill a hole through the back, and then we're going to apply a little bit of five-minute epoxy uh, just to make sure that they don't move much. Yes, we're putting it into the finish, and that is perfectly fine because we're also going to have a screw on there, and there's really no weight to them at all. So we're going to run a screw through the back and then into the pre-drilled um, Paduk. And I'm also using steel screws here uh, because I don't want them snapping off. And we are going into Paduk, which is incredibly hard. So run a screw through, and it gives you a little bit of that wiggle room, and you can uh, move it for a little bit. You've got five minutes to work with it uh, until it sets up, and then it's pretty well locked in place. So there's the Marine logo on one side, the cross on the other. Come back in and put in the hinges now that they're all in place being very, very careful not to slip and scratch the brass. And then always make sure you clock your screws. You want them all pointing in the same direction. Otherwise, you look like a fool. Or maybe that's just me. <laughs> Had the glass um, cut with a uh, local glass cutter. And we're going to be putting in a, a few small nails around the outside. Just got these nice little brass ones that can bend out of the way if you need them to. Uh, or you can pull them out. Uh, not, don't pound them in all the way. Just pound them in enough to hold the glass in. Um, I normally would prefer to use uh, glazing spikes. But I didn't have any of those in hand, and I had these tiny little brass screws, uh, nails that worked really, really well. These roses are actually made by uh, ZH Fabrication, so a good friend of mine, and uh, he does an amazing job. He, he did a, a fundraiser recently making those for cystic fibrosis. So now we get the chance to give it to the family, and uh, they're bringing in the flag that will go in the, to finish off the case. So this is the, the flag from the funeral for a Marine, his wife, and just... Uh, really kind of cool to see all the little details come together to make this happen. And I am really, really happy with how this came out. It finishes well and will look really good in their house. And I hope they like it as much as I do because this was a lot of fun to make. It isn't just the simple box. It has a lot more to it. And that really says a lot and feels really good. So there you have it. This is uh, a really kind of a cool one. I know it's a little longer video than normal, and that is uh, because this is just, uh, I didn't want to split it into two. There's enough there that it makes one good video or two bad videos. Uh, so I hope you like that. Uh, if you do have any other questions, I know I sped through a few of the sections. Let me know in the comments down below. I hope you like this with a little bit of the significance of some of the other pieces in here rather than just a simple triangular box. Uh, this was a fun one to, to put together and actually make this whole thing happen. So I hope you like that. If you do have any specific questions, comments, thoughts, ideas, let me know those down in the comments below. I do read through all of them and I try and answer as many as I possibly can. On top of that, I wanna say a huge thank you to everyone scrolling over here on the side. They are patrons on Patreon, uh, members here on the channel. Uh, without you guys, this channel wouldn't exist, so thank you for that. If you'd like to see content like this and you wanna keep the channel going, that is one of the best ways to do it. You can find out more about Patreon down in the description down below or click the little join button down below and become a member here on YouTube. Thank you, and without you guys, this channel wouldn't exist. So I think on that note, we're going to wrap this up, and until next time, have a wonderful day. So we were really looking for what we could put in this to represent the Marines, and we decided to go with the crest, but we could have put in a bag of crayons.